Welcome to the Newton tutorial series. I'm Mike Cruz with AC Tech, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to calculate a solids ratio for your particle sets in Newton. If we go to our particle library, you'll notice that for each of these particle sets we have a solids ratio. And that solids ratio is manually set by the user. For, each, for the default particle set, we've already gone through and calculated all of these solids ratios. But if you were to create your own particle set, you're going to need to calculate this. So what this ratio is, it, it represents the proportion of solid material that is generated divided by the total volume of material generated. So for instance, if I tell Newton to generate two cubic meters, let's suppose that two cubic meters would exactly fill up this cylinder. Well, certainly there's going to be gaps. There's going to be air gaps in between the particles all the way up and down the cylinder. So when I tell it to generate two cubic meters of material, if I was to actually take the volume of each sphere and add it all up, it's not generating two cubic meters. It's generating a little over one, maybe 1.1 or 1.2. And that's because Newton knows that there's going to be air gaps. And calculating that solids ratio has to be done empirically, because there's no way to, to look at this particle set and look at this distribution and say, oh, I can calculate. I know it's going to be exactly 0.593. So instead, we simply fill up our material and we dump it into the cylinder, and then we'll, we'll, we'll use an algorithm to measure what that solids ratio is. So when we're doing this, basically what you do is, is you use one of these, um, get rid of these particles, you use one of these cylinders that we've provided along with Newton, or you can create your own cylinder, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you use a cylinder and that you know the volume of that cylinder, you know the, the radius rather, of that cylinder. So what you'll do is, is for instance, I'm using, right here I'm using a cylinder that's 600 millimeters in radius, and I believe the height is, is two and a half or three meters, but it's irrelevant, because all I need to know is that I'm going to generate material, and that material, certainly, I don't want to generate all the way up to the top. I want it to stop uh, maybe halfway to three quarters of the way up. So all I do is I say, well, let's generate a, a block of material that I know will almost fill up this cylinder. And you can see I've got 35,000 clusters, almost 100,000 particles. And in order to accurately calculate that solids ratio, you're going to want to use a large number of clusters and spheres. I mean, probably 100,000 particles is probably good, but I'd say I'd be hesitant about using any fewer than, than about this many clusters and particles, because you got to make sure that, that the, the container is big enough that all the particles will disperse themselves in a sufficiently random pattern. You can imagine if I tried to use this same size cylinder for a 60 to 180, well, there's just not enough particles in there, and, and it's, it's very likely that we're going to calculate an erroneous solids ratio if we use so few particles. How many was that? Yeah, it was only 3,000 clusters, 12,000 particles. So, like I said, anywhere above about 30,000 clusters and close to 100,000 spheres, that's kind of what you want to aim for. The higher you go, the more accurate your calculation may be. However, past a certain point, you're going to keep getting the exact same number, and it really is irrelevant. So it's, it's not necessary to use, you know, two million particles or something ridiculous like that. And it's important to note that if I was to run this simulation multiple times, I might calculate slightly different solids ratios. I might get 0 0.590 and 0 0.594 and 0.592, and that's because of the way the, the particles disperse themselves. But we're only looking for, you know, we 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 were looking for to the nearest 0 0.01 is going to be sufficient. So what you'll do is you'll take and generate that material. We're going to actually do uh we're going to do a 50 to 150 set because that'll go pretty quick. So this is breaking that rule about not using a not using the the right size container. But that's just cuz this is for an example. So what we'll do is we'll take this and make sure we set our max expected velocity. You're going to want to make sure you set that to however fast these top particles are going to be falling. So if I know that this height is is five is say five meters tall, well, I know these top particles are probably going to fall only about two meters or three meters. And what's the max? I could calculate what that max velocity would be when these impact the top of the pile. But um, certainly it's it's not any more than seven. This could probably actually be more like five. So, what we'll do then is we'll simply run this 
Um, my simulation time is five seconds, that's fine. If we look from a front view, we can watch these particles as they all fall in here. So now what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this all the particles drop in and they're going to fill up the cylinder. And that's only going to take maybe you know three quarters of a second. But I'm going to wait an additional second or two so that I can make sure that all the particles have shuffled themselves around and, and settled down properly. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pause the tutorial uh, right now while I wait for this to finish. I'll come back in a few minutes. All right, so we're at about 2.4 seconds here, and the material has pretty much settled down. If I go ahead and just switch to a transparent view, you can see there's a little bit of velocity here, but that's just because of the, the shuffling nature of, of the particles. So going on a scale from 0 to 0 0.01, the particles are essentially not moving. So what you'll do now is you can go ahead and stop the simulation if you want, or you can pause it, or you can just leave it run. But we're going to go on up to the solver menu and say, Calculate Solids Ratio and what it does is all it asks for is the radius of the drop cylinder because what it will do is says well if I know this radius is 0 0.6 meters Newton will start at the at the origin here and it'll basically calculate it'll count up the particles and calculate the volume occupied by these particles and it'll find the top of this pile and says well according to this simulation these particles fill up you know two-thirds of the cylinder so I know the exact height of this material and I and I can and, and Newton can calculate the exact true volume so it says well simply what's the the true volume of the particles divided by the height of the material but divided by the volume of of space occupied and that's how it calculates so all you have to do is enter that radius and hit calculate it will come back and it says oh solids ratio 0 0.569 says here's the height so 1.794 that's that's a, the approximate height of here so 5 0.569 then go ahead and stop this now if I want it's important to note that you have to calculate this solids ratio before you leave the simulation so while the simulation is still running or while the simulation is paused or right after you hit stop that's, this is when you can calculate the solids ratio. But as soon as, you know, if I was to, to jump back to my general variables or jump back to my generator, as soon as I leave this, this simulation, I can no longer calculate that solids ratio. I have to do it while the simulation is running. And we're going to change that so that if you wanted, you could just go back and open up this playback file and you could just calculate the solids ratio right from the playback file. But um, for the time being, you have to make sure you, you do this before you leave this, this solver window. So now if I go back, obviously, oh, it is still there, but it shouldn't be there. The point is, if, if I was to open up, a, if I was to go to a new input file, I can't do it. Or if I was to open up that playback file, I can't do it. So we, what, what did we say? We said that that solids ratio was 0 0.569. So if I go open up my user library again, 50 to 150. So this one it says 0 0.577. So there's a discrepancy there, and that's probably because we were using a, a cylinder that was way too small. If we were using the proper cylinder, it would be right in that general neighborhood, maybe 0 0.575 or 0 0.579. So then as soon as you get that solids ratio, all you do is you go back to your particle library and you would just modify this value. So I'd say this is 0 0.569. And now I've calculated, the, I've put in my new solids ratio. So now next time I go generate material with this set, it's going to generate about 0 0.008. It's going to generate about 0.8% less material. So if I look at this, if I say, all right, number of particles, 93,600. So I would expect that there will be less than 93,000 if I hit generate again. If I generate my 50 to 150 again. Oh, that's right. We were using a different size one, weren't we? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just, we'll just look at it like this. 21,700. Now if I go back and change this to 0 0.577, that's what it was. So it was it was 21688 before. Now if I hit generate again, 21981. So now we've increased the number of particles. So basically, it's it's just a linear correlation. If I was to if I was to double the solids ratio or cut the solids ratio in half, I'm going to generate twice as much or half as much material, and that's how it works. So there are there are arguments about 
some of our clients have asked us, well, what kind of friction settings do you use when you calculate this? And we always use our free-flowing, low friction settings. And some some people will say, well, you know, if, if I'm running a high friction simulation, shouldn't I use high friction to calculate the solids ratio? And the answer is, well, you could, but we prefer to use the low friction. And uh, th we discussed this in the user manual. There's a section about calculating the solids ratio, which um, describes this a little in a little bit more detail, if I can find it. There we go. So there's a solids ratio, you know, 0 0.58, 0 0.48. So here, we, sh we have some pictures of material on belts and showing how the uh, how you can calculate the cross-sectional area on the belt and how that might relate to the solids ratio and talking about when you're using high friction settings the material simply stacks up higher on the belt and if you were to take if you were to look down the belt with a high friction simulation it kinda looks like following this yellow line it looks like well maybe that's where maybe that's where the the true um, the true area should be taken for the belt but really you know, all you're doing is stacking up the higher the particles higher, and there's going to be more gaps between the particles because we're not simulating those really fine particles in the flow, and that's why we recommend that you use the low friction settings to calibrate, and that's what we've used to calibrate all of these solids ratios. But certainly, if you choose to use high friction to calculate it, it's completely up to you. So I think that covers calculating that solids ratio. And if you have any more questions, be sure to read through that section of the manual, and, and you could give us an email, shoot us an email if you like. Thank you.